Hey everyone, it's Jack and Adam from Cultaholic.com. Friday, Friday. It's mandatory to get down on Friday. Everyone's looking forward to the weekend and also looking forward to wrestling news, Adam, are you? I can't ruddy bloody wait, Jack. Let's just get on with it, Let's quick. Just look at the headlines. First up, CM Punk has commented on whether or not he is bound for AEW. Secondly, we take a look at reports that many WWE superstars are just waiting for their contracts to expire. And finally, another huge match has been set for All Elite Wrestling, this one on August 31st, All Out. So first of all, let's talk about CM Punk because he has been on Twitter and obviously everything Punk says has to be taken my wrists grind when I do that. So I'm he, he so it, old. No, he does it to pop his. I think he does it to pop his joints. Oh, oh I just did it there. Nobody wants to listen to that. Sorry. Um, CM ASMR. CM Punk uh, has been on Twitter, and obviously everything that CM Punk says, he's a bit of a trolley troll troll because you got to take it with a grain of salt. But this one was interesting because he directly responded to somebody regarding AEW uh, in scathing fashion because uh, a guy called Oscar on Twitter tweeted him saying, "I'd CM Punk." <laughs> <laughs> are you going to disappoint your fans by not showing up at AEW? People say wrestling fans are entitled. I know. Um, and Punk just quote retweeted it and just put, yes, he is going to disappoint the fans by not showing up at All Elite Wrestling. Now, it's hard to tell what that means, isn't it? I feel like we're clinging on a hope. So I don't know what he means. Maybe he'll no, still be there. I think the second but, part of this makes it more interesting. So, Cody Rhodes recently was interviewed by Comic Book and said that, first of all, the Elite were surprised uh, pleasantly surprised last year at All In when there were minimal CM Punk chants. There wasn't a focus on Punk. There wasn't any sort of disappointment that he didn't show up because mm. the show was so good. And the same could be said of Double or Nothing in Las Vegas as well. I, I seem to remember one or two happening during Double or Nothing. Right. But I, I, maybe I'm misremembering. I can't yeah, but it certainly, as you say, didn't take over the show in no. any way. Didn't detract from what was happening. Not at all, uh, especially with the big debut at the end. Now, um, he said, though, that uh, given when asked about the possibility of Punk uh, appearing in All Elite Wrestling, he did say, I've been very honest about the fact that the door remains open. The fans have never given up on CM Punk, and if he wanted to be part of AEW, we would do everything in our power to make him part of it. Now, you said that that, that seems to imply that Punk isn't currently, there's, no, there's nothing on the table for Punk at the moment. No, I think that would be a really weird PR move if there was something organized for All Out in Chicago. Uh, first of all, for Punk to do that. Yeah. If he did that, and hey, maybe that's just a swerve. I think it's a bit of a weird one. Really, you'd want to just sort of remain silent, yeah. throw people off, or whatever. But I think Cody saying that the door is absolutely always open is a, a move to tell fans that, you know, maybe there's been discussions, they would love him there, but he's not going to be there. He wouldn't be saying that if there was something organized for it. Tony yeah. Khan himself has said that he is, Punk is the guy that he's always wanted to get. And yet, Cody acknowledging that, saying that the door remains open to me, is just saying he's not going to be. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But, I'd love um, to see him there, obviously. I would as well. Uh, I saw a post on Reddit, it was quite a funny one, that said that Punk should be a heel commentator for AEW who refuses to wrestle, <laughs> uh, which is good. But I can see him at some, in some capacity down the line, maybe not even necessarily in ring, being a part of AEW, because it just seems so... Punk was always very open with the fact that he didn't fall out of love WWE made him fall out of love with wrestling, but he, he would see himself getting back into wrestling, just never WWE. Yes. And this seems to be the sort of thing that Punk would love. He'd just be like, well, this is great. This is a sort of the anti-WWE. It's yeah. rising up. And I just, I just think we will see him at some point down the line, but not necessarily like as a full-time ro full roster member. It'll be the Brock Lesnar of AEW, except people will actually like him. I think they could pull off heel punk in AEW. Coming in and being a part-timer. Maybe, or just coming in and just being a dick like he was at Ring of Honor. It'd be but difficult to get him booed. At first, yeah. yeah. At first, absolutely. But, oh, God. If he does come back, he needs to practice his GCS. <laughs> because I know he had his hood up and he had a bit of a mask on and everything. But if that was him, which it was, uh, then that was, a, that was a shambles. I can't believe that people... I, I couldn't believe the nerve of some people when that happened. Go on. When they wanted more and more proof and then proof came out and they were like, no. <laughs> when like, he was like, oh, well, he was two blocks away in the same hoodie that day. And, and the same were, shoes. And the same shoes, <laughs> yeah. was it? And people were like, no, nah, everyone's got a hoodie. So <laughs> I was so annoyed. Um, but yes, so far, it seems as though Punk is not heading to Only Wrestling and is set on disappointing his fans. Yes! Mm. <laughs> Next up, let's go to Wrestling Observer Radio because Meltzer was talking about the mood backstage. His sources seem to have told him that lots of WWE superstars are just waiting for their contracts to expire, which is something I think that we suspected given social media activity and their misuse or just total lack of use on shows. Uh, we were talking the other day about the, the Kabuki Warriors, Kairi Sane and Asuka, who've just 
they're off the radar now. Debuted, huge new tag team. Yeah. Paige brings them in. Yeah. Two of the best women's wrestlers in the company, full stop. Haven't been seen on TV for, what is it now? Three weeks, yeah, four weeks? It's, it's like pathetic. It just, oh. um, so, um, there have been reports of WWE talent wanting to leave for months, but apparently the real catalyst for this was uh, Double or Nothing and how good it was. Mm -hmm. And the fact that everyone saw that and went, oh, this is a viable alternative now. Yes. We've known about people like Gallows, Anderson, um, yeah. Luke, yeah. as well, Luke Harper, uh, wanting to go, but the insinuation here is that there are more people just waiting for things to run out. Yeah. Um, now, WWE's response is a very interesting one. It seems a bit panicked and a bit misguided, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, Stephanie McMahon was in Orlando for a business meeting and apparently took the opportunity to stop by NXT uh, or the Performance Center, I guess. Uh, oh, it was before the tapings. It was before the tapings that we've seen this week for NXT. And apparently she held a talent meeting uh, in which uh, it was basically described by Mantis sources as a pep talk, which seems misguided because why would you go to NXT for that? Where people are largely happy, largely utilized, given screen time yeah. and a bit of creative freedom. They're not the people that you should be talking to. Go backstage at Raw, <sighs> go backstage at SmackDown. Maybe it was because they're like the future, I guess. But the more immediate concern has to be people on the main roster like Sasha Banks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really understand. But anyway, um, she reportedly, Stephanie this is, pushed how great everything, how great everything is with the company. And sure how, is, and how talent, the TV shows. And how talents get to be their own brands in the company, which directly contradicts what John Moxley said in his podcast after mm -hmm. he left. Like, di it's a direct contradiction. His whole thing was that he didn't feel in charge of his character and he felt creatively very stifled. And they don't even own their names. Right. <laughs> they, right. You can't parents. represent your own brand. Um, Stephanie also pushed social media in a big way. Her presentation included a big screen that showed how Forbes recently listed WWE <laughs> and WrestleMania <laughs> as one of the top 10 most powerful brands on social media. It's one of the raw, did you know, WWE has a combined 1 billion social media followers. <laughs> they don't care about that. They want to wrestle. <laughs> they want to have a bit of creative freedom. It's just... Uh, I don't know why she's doing this sort of business pitch to people within the company already. This sounds like the sort of thing you do for fans and for invest, potential investors. Yes, and stuff. It's yeah. Very um, it was also noted by Meltzer that WWE is trying to convince talents that their careers are over if they leave, which, again, seems particularly untrue at this moment in time. Even before AEW, we've right. got a flourishing indie scene where people have been able to go and wrestle worldwide have more creative control, make a very, very decent living doing so. Cody Rhodes is the perfect example. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now AEW's a thing. There are more alternatives than ever. Yeah. I don't understand what they, it seems like they're panicking slightly. I think the biggest indication that they're panicking is something that emerged last week, which is the basic NXT contract. Um, the duration has gone from three years to five years. That's them wanting to lock down talent for mm. as long as possible, trying to keep them away from everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Apparently me. part of this was the uh, you know the, the Yolo County um tag champ. The the Buzz from 2K19 yes. who appeared on SmackDown this the week. The cardboard belt. Apparently that was to um sort of make fun of the indie scene and say this is what it's like. This is WWE is your option. Some indie promotions have really good belts. Not, cardboard not, not, belts. not there's anything wrong with cardboard belts. Nothing is wrong I know that you're quite passionate about that. Jesus Christ. Still your idea. Idea. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome, Steph. Next up, let's Talk about all of the wrestling. Um, there's a huge match that's been set for All Out on August 31st in Illinois. It's going to be John Moxley versus Kenny Omega, and it was announced yesterday on social media by All Elite Wrestling. That's pretty huge. That's a huge match. It, it's not a surprise, I don't think, because no. it was implied by the ending of Double or Nothing that that's what was going to happen. Omega and Moxley had that big brawl, and he an F you. Uh, yeah, he off, death, off the poker he chips. Death Valley driver him <laughs> off the poker chips onto the stage and... Um, it's not a surprise. I, I, you know what? If this was just down to investment on my part, fan investment, this would be the main event. It shouldn't be because the, the main event is, of course, Jericho Page. For the title. For the, for the, yeah. the first ever champion. Yeah. But this is the match that I'm most excited I for. Know. It's going to be unreal. I'm wondering... Right, here we go. Prediction time. Okay. Moxley. <laughs> I don't know. Moxley. Moxley and Omega uh, are the penultimate match. Great match, steal the show, blah, blah, blah. Burn the crowd out before Chris and Jericho think, goes around dicks about, grabs yeah. the camera. Well, he's going to do that, I know. And, and I think that if they build it right, then everyone could be fully behind Hangman Page to win. I don't think he'll win, but to send everyone home happy, there's another big debut at the end. A call out when Jericho's doing <laughs> No, not him. Us, not hey. him. Oh, I don't know. Bloody... Sasha Banks. Yes. No, I'll think of someone. Gallows, Harper, Anderson. 
Rusev, None of them. Nakamura. Maybe Nakamura. Well, I don't know any of the contract lengths. That's the problem. Yeah. Austin. <laughs> Austin Jericho. Yeah, <laughs> yes. the new revolution in wrestling. Take that WWE. <laughs> um, so yeah, and tickets are on sale today for uh, for All Out in just a few hours. Get excited. I am excited. Get the cat excited. Still don't know what that means. <laughs> Next up, WWE have announced two new signings and they are familiar faces for anyone who watched the greatest <laughs> Royal Rumble last year. Now remember that segment where the Davaris came out and tried to get in the faces of four trainees? and then the trainees beat them up and everyone was buzzing because they were all local lads. Mm -hmm. Well, we already know that Mansoor has been signed because he not only is often hanging out in the performance center with like Tegan Knox and them on stream, but he's only part of their stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He seems like quite a likable chap. He's yeah, one of the boys. He's, he's, he's really actually nice. one of the lads. Um, well, we know he's been signed, but also because he won the biggest battle royal ever at Super Showdown. 51, man. What? It was 51. I thought it was 50. 50. Was uh, it? 51. What? Count them, ref. Okay. Um, but apparently also two other lads from that segment have been signed as well. Uh, Faisal Kurdi and Hussein Aldegar, uh, who are both from Saudi Arabia and were part of the recent tryout that they had in Jeddah. So I'm, I'm confused, because if, if there were successful applicants to the recent tryout in Jeddah, then what were they last year? Why were they... Was there another trial? I think it was year? just to show that maybe there, there's a, a wrestling scene in Saudi Arabia, okay, perhaps, right, okay. just to, or just to give the uh, the crowd something that they can get behind. Right, the locals. It was very house showy, that's for sure. But they've signed NXT deals with the company, and I've reported to the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Now, all I want to see is for them and Mansoor not to be chucked in the same stable because they're all from Saudi Arabia, right? Yes. I'd like to see a bit of imagination, give them their own characters, and and let's just. You know, let's even pretend they're not the same nationality. Let's just pretend that's not the same. Because, because when... Where, because, where right, are you going to build because when, Faisal no, from, Jack? Right, okay, no, let's, okay, let's not pretend. But let's not pretend that that means they have to tag together. Because one thing that annoyed me, right, and I liked the tag team, I thought they were great, but it was the fact that Io Shirai and Kairi Sane team together. I was like, well, it's because they're both... I guess they do have history and stardom, but then... When they were announcing Asuka's new partner on the main roster... <laughs> it be? It's Kairi Sane. <laughs> of course it Japanese is. people don't always have to tag together. I don't know. Of course know. they do. Asuka's best tag partner was the not Miz. Lazy. They won Mixed Match Challenge together, Asuka and Miz did. And finally, some nice news to end on. Uh, Mick Foley has announced on Twitter that over $100,000 have been raised by the Squared Circle Sisters charity, uh, and over 2,800 people were involved to donate, and that was to uh, fund Ashley Mazzara's daughter's education, her college fund, which is lovely news. Really nice thing for Mick Foley and everyone who donated to do. And I guess it's always nice when a, a tragic situation can be turned into... can be. Help to make something good, I suppose. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Foley's been selling the um, the Cactus Jack shirts and Socos and all of the proceeds going mm. to, to this charity. Yeah, it's uh, obviously tragic, but at the same time, some good has come of it. Yes. That's, that's very nice. Absolutely. Thanks very much for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments section down below. You can follow Cultaholic on Twitter at Cultaholic, and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do, then please do check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic, where you can pledge. And don't forget, of course, most importantly of all, to hit subscribe and to join us.